Dresden, a city known for both arts and science. Three researchers from diverse disciplines joined forces here to develop a new trailblazing sensor. Thorsten Pfister, Doctorate of Engineering. Lars Brutner, Doctor of Natural Sciences. Jürgen Sarska, Professor of Electrical Engineering. The trick to put to good use what had actually been an annoying interference effect. The laser Doppler distance sensor came into being because of a disturbing effect, namely the diffraction of light, which researchers had tried to suppress for decades, is now being deliberately amplified. Sometimes you have to think outside the box. V equals F times D, F2 divided by F1, looks good, proportional to Z, that's correct so far. The innovation makes possible a novel process for measuring distances to and the shapes of rapidly moving objects, and for flow measurements. The laser Doppler distance sensor is based on the Doppler effect, but is fundamentally new in that the Doppler effects of four laser beams are subjected to systematic comparison. And in this way, we turn what was previously a restriction, namely the diffraction limit, into a beneficial effect. We do this by conducting two measurements at the same time. Here you see two laser beams exiting the front of the measurement head. They move closer and closer together and then cross right at the surface of the object. This is the area where the measurement is made. It is possible to determine precisely not only the velocity of an object, but its exact distance as well. This makes for a wide variety of uses in manufacturing techniques and process monitoring. You can see that these two peaks, or these two maximums, are at two different frequencies. These are the two Doppler frequencies we measure. It is possible to calculate, based on their relationship, the two values depicted here. The one is the velocity, or to be more exact, the tangential velocity at the surface of the object. The other value is shown as a blue bar, that's the radial position. Such rapid frequency measurement lets us reach very high sampling rates, right up into the megahertz range. We took the world record because when measuring a turbine or other fast-moving surfaces, we are able to determine the absolute position in real time at greater temporal resolution, down into the microsecond range, and at high resolution of the position, down to the micrometer range. The team first used the sensor to determine flow profiles near the walls in injection nozzles, for example, again in the micrometer range. That, too, had previously been inconceivable. We first used the sensor to examine flow patterns around airfoils and then, ultimately, to investigate the flows of high-pressure natural gas streams in a very large pipe. The sensor's resolution was so great that we kept moving down towards smaller and smaller numbers. That makes it possible to examine even smaller flows, and that's exactly what we're doing in this experiment. We've built a microchannel experiment where we're examining a flow through a channel only 65 micrometers thin. That can be used, for example, to measure the flow rate for dosing of medicines, for instance. Here, we want to dose drugs at nanoliter accuracy, and this sensor is especially well suited for that purpose. The laser Doppler distance sensor seems simple enough, or was there something else? When my nephew uh, he would ask me to measure the speed of a train, I'd tell him that we can do that with stop-start measurements, just like we measure a runner's speed at a 100-mile sprint. With our sensor, we can now use optical means to measure the speed of a train. That was possible in the past, but now we can also measure how far away this train is as it moves past us and how fast it's traveling, and both highly exactly. This combination of these two values is an innovation of our sensor. Yeah.